I'm Jinx for Xbox Australia, and I'm here at E3 in Los Angeles. I'm here with Cliff Blazinski from Epic Games, but today we're not talking Gears of War, we're talking Shadow Complex. So, briefly, what is Shadow Complex? It's different. It is different. It's, uh, imagine if Out of This World and Super Metroid got together and had a baby. It'd be that kind of game. It's basically, uh a spiritual successor to that kind of game. You're a guy named Jason Fleming who's caught in this kind of web of intrigue whereas he's uh, hanging out with this girl that he has a crush on. They're hiking in the middle of the Pacific Northwest in a forest and they stumble upon an underground lair of these guys who are basically trying to stage a coup of the American government. And it's a huge underground complex filled with all sorts of uh, weapons, all sorts of gadgets. And he start, the girl gets kidnapped, of course, because, duh, it's like the princess, right? And uh, he basically has to go try and find Claire and use the enemy's weapons and items against them. And so once, for example, he finds a foam gun, he can then uh, open certain doors using that or make uh, staircases to get to new areas. Once he finds a rocket launcher, he can use that to open some of the heavy doors and then continue to kind of expand the game and have that level of recursion that's seen in games like Castlevania and Metroid. Okay, cool. Um, have you guys considered uh, uh, like an alternate unlock mode where the girl has to go save the guy? Yeah, generally speaking, our target demographic is white male age, is 18 to 35 years old, and uh, I don't know if they would necessarily feel empowered by that. But that said, you have games like Tomb Raider that have strong female protagonists. Oh, I need to go see Bayonetta, by the way. We should go check that out. All right, we'll um, later. Yeah, later. Yeah, she's like the, the Sarah Palin from my dreams. <laughs> and guns on her shoes, I mean, come on. Uh, so yeah, I mean, you can do strong female protagonists, but uh, you know, this game, the, the ship has kind of already sailed on that. All right, well, fair enough. So I noticed uh, when I saw it the other night that uh, there's this area in it where you're kind of going down a, a, a slanted uh, escalator, more it's called, or less. It's called an inclinator. And you're going down an inclinator. See, I've learned something today. Yay. You're going down an inclinator uh, very slowly. And uh, the second I saw it, I thought of the original Half-Life. Oh, yeah. um, asked, And it turned out that it really was an homage. Do you guys have any other uh, homages? Um, in, in the game that, that we can look forward to just seeing and recognizing? Um, I don't really know if there's that many homages per se in regards to games like that. There's a great moment though where you're you, you think when you start playing the game you're going to be stuck in this underground complex the whole time but you actually come up and go back into the forest a little while and at one point there's a little cabin in the woods and you're actually trying to get to it and you have to swim and you're going through the water and a chopper comes after you and it's trying to take you out and while you're swimming underwater the bullets are kind of going through saving private Ryan, saving private Ryan style like doing 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 you know, little bubbles and everything and uh, it, it, it makes you a little nervous in the moment it feels very cinematic it's got a little bit of that kind of water cooler moment element that made gears great in it right like great boss battles uh, awesome stuff happening everywhere and actually a pretty intriguing storyline and I noticed as well that, uh, especially for an Xbox Live Arcade game, the graphics are pretty stunning. How did you guys pull that off? That's because it's running on the latest Unreal Engine 3. Oh, snap! Oh, so that's, that was my inner Mark Rain speaking, I'm sorry. Um, but yeah, I mean, we, uh, we knew the guys at Chair for a while. They did Advent Rising, they did Undertow, which was very well received on Xbox Live Arcade. And they said, uh, you know, this is the kind of game we want to make. We want to work with you to use the latest tools. And uh, I think it looks better than pretty much anything I've seen on Xbox Live Arcade. It's really hopefully going to raise the bar much like Gears did and uh, we really want to make sure that anything we put out that has the epic name on it has that level of polish that we put into all our products. And, and that was, um, that's definitely noticed there. The first time I saw it, I didn't realize it was an arcade game. And that's what we're going for. Well, it's succeeded. Cool, dude. <laughs> so what, what is your role in this game? Uh, well, my position at Epic is design director. So Donald Mustard is actually the creative visionary driving the, the actual you know vision of the game. And so basically I get the build once a week and I play it and send notes and then have meetings with the guys to talk about how can we make the targeting better, uh, you know, what's up with uh, this graphic on this character, things like that. Um, and you know, just kind of basically be the fun uncle to come in and help tweak the game a little bit. So what you're saying is that your job is to play the game and tell them how to make it even more fun. Yeah, basically. And it's kind of fun actually. It's a fun, fun job I have. Yeah, it sounds it's, mm, sounds like a tough one. Well, this is the part of my job where people are like, do you just play video games all day long? And like, yeah, actually with this one, I kind of do. <laughs> and, and with this game, what, what's your favorite part about it? If you were to pick one thing, one thing that, that you're the most proud of or that, that gets you more than anything else, what is it? I like the bosses. I mean, so when I first saw this game and uh, Donald and them, they're like, okay, we want to do this game, we want to make it cool, it's going to be kind of this uh, spiritual sequel to Metroid. Um, and I'm like, okay, that's cool. And they're like, oh, we're going to have bosses. I'm like, really? 
and they, they have like these uh, two-legged mechs, they have spider mechs, and what happens is and you, the game tricks you, so you're, you're playing in 2D most of the time, and then all of a sudden things will come out of the background, like the spider tank crawls out of the background, perfectly synced up with the wall animations and everything, and then you actually have to fight it. It actually scares the crap out of you the first time it happens, and some of the other bosses do that, and choppers come in and out of the uh, you know 3D plane, and uh, it's those moments for me with the, the mechs and the choppers, and the running and the screaming that I think are uh, really, really cool. The running and the screaming does always to, make a game. To, get to the chopper! <laughs> And do you know when we're going to see it? Uh, summer. We don't have an exact date nailed down. Pricing is yet to be determined. Um, but imagine it'll be somewhere in the range of what your classic kind of best Xbox Live Arcade games are price-wise. Ooh, best. Best. Ambitious. Yeah, setting a new bar and raising the excellent saucity. All right, we'll take a look at it, and then we're going to go see that chick in that game. Yeah, I want to see my Sarah Palin. <gasps> this is Jinx from E3. Keep watching.